So, what have you also learned when you were working all those years with Irrelicht? Now you change it to Nabla, like your own engine working with your employees. Uh, what are the core things that you learned uh, by the time you've worked? What have uh, you learned to never do? What are the improvements? So on and so forth. Um, I mean, one of the things that you should possibly never do is begin to think and design your data structures so that they can be used by multiple threads simultaneously. Because either it's not going to work or it's going to be really slow. So, you know, you're not going to get any performance speed up from firing up eight threads, which are going to be doing the same thing on the same object. Because you know, if you if you have shared data structures between threads, what, what basically happens is that you need to put a whole bunch of locks and weights and all sorts of things which basically prevent uh, concurrent uh, uh, write access or even, you know, concurrent read access. So basically partitioning work into separate things, which basically one thread doesn't have access to the bunch of things that the other thread is doing. And, and basically where everybody has its own little piece of work, which doesn't co-depend with another piece of work, that's very important. And that's also important when, you know, when you're scheduling people, uh, you know, you don't want to put two people on the same task. So that's also something that I learned as, you know, somebody who employs, you know, four people and possibly more in the coming weeks. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the threads are the same as people. I mean, you, you, you wouldn't want to, I don't know, uh, delegate two people to pack the same box of chocolates, right? Yeah, it's not going to work. That kind of makes sense. Yeah, that's, good. that's, good. that's just going to take more than if you just took one person to do it. Um, so yeah, so, so that's that's pretty much like number one thing. And, and basically, global variables are bad. Uh, Fred local variables are also bad because Fred local variables are the same thing to fibers as global variables are to, uh, to threads. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, there's also basically static variables are not special. They are globals. They're just, you know, they have scopes for naming. And that's the only thing about them. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, you know, and pass all of your state as explicit. So, you know, if you're making a, a function that relies on some state, don't embed the state into the object, have a separate context object. Because then, you know, next time you call this function, if you call it from two threads, that's going to be a problem. Because, you know, so, I mean, I'm not a great fan of functional programming. Uh, you know, I think the procedural makes a lot of sense, especially not pure, pure functional like Haskell. Uh, but I, I am of the opinion that all of the state, or basically the output of a function, or what the function does, should only depend on the inputs to the function. So if you have some sort of a state that needs to control what a function does, um, that needs to go into the function as a parameter, as some sort of maybe like a, a pointer to a constant context, uh, sorry, not, not constant, but I mean like a pointer to a context option or, uh, or a const context struct, something like that. You know, don't don't make stuff implicit. Um, is that the no, reason why you don't like Haskell? Um, well, is there a reason why I don't like Haskell? Because Haskell is basically very absolutist. Um, so it basically says that the the what a function does should always be repeatable, uh, given the same parameters. And the problem with that is, it's just absolutely well, it's not impossible, but you kind of have to go against that if you want to do anything like file reading and file writing. Because, I mean, you know, if you do file read and file write with the same file name, then by Haskell's, uh, by, by Haskell's assumptions, your program should always, like, kind of produce the same value. But, you know, if you're going to open and then write append to a file, then that kind of depends on some implicit state that is outside of the program. You know, it's, it's outside of that function. So, 
uh, doing anything useful cannot be done with like a pure functional uh, language unless all of the implicit state ever, like basically the previous contents of a file or, or something like that, you basically bake into this one big function. Uh, so, I mean, to, to do anything in Haskell, like, you know, for example, OpenGL or do anything like a file IO in Haskell is basically uh, a, a total mindfuck. 